Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, the Dove Dog and I are gonna do a V8 swap. We're gonna put an LS in this thing. Just kidding, the old worn out TBI works just fine. We're gonna put a 350 in this thing. Nah, the old gutless 235 is still killing it in that thing, plus it works good. Maybe we'll put a flathead V8 in this thing. Who knows, we gotta get this banger running, then we'll see where it's at. Or what about this guy? Ah, it's already got a V8 that runs, so we should probably just leave it together, but we should probably work on that thing one of these. You wanna show them what we're gonna V8 swap, Duff? That's right, Casper, the 1986 Chevrolet short bed, cheapest square body short bed on marketplace that we could find. The old 4.3 won't hardly get out of its own way. It's running like hot garbage. It's a tri-brid. That's right. It's a tri-brid. It's better than a hybrid. It uses gas, oil, and coolant. I'm pretty sure we just coined that term. But anyway, this pickup really isn't that bad. It goes up and down the road good. It's got a turbo 400 in it. It's got a DJM lowering suspension on it. It's got new Cooper Cobras all the way around. It's got 15 by rally wheels. It's got a nice seat. It just... Needs a couple little things, needs some rust repairs, but the biggest thing is the 4.3 runs like hot garbage. It's smoking super bad, both oil and coolant smoke coming out the tailpipe. So I think we got a head gasket issue and we probably got some issues with either the valves or the uh, piston rings because this thing is using a lot of oil and a lot of coolant. And like I said, it's loading up the plugs. It's just running absolutely terrible. So we got to do something about it. I just happen to have a couple of small block Chevys laying around. We could put an LS in it, but then it snowballs. Then you want to get rid of that turbo 400 and put an overdrive in it. And then you got to swap the fuel tank so you can put a high pressure in it. And then you're redoing all the exhaust. And I'm hoping we can just take a 350 and drop it in here because a 4.3 and a 350 are basically the same thing. Hopefully we can use all the accessories. Hopefully we can use the exhaust. Uh, maybe even the radiator, the fan, the carburetor. Oh, a lot of that stuff should carry over and we should just swap it in. It'd be like a, you know, couple day deal. Knock on wood. So, all right, let's uh, just get this thing up in the air, crawl underneath, take a look at it and jump right into it. We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you Mortski merch. Check out the Cowboy Cadillac shirts that we got in stock in heather gray next level the softest thing you will ever feel it's like getting a hug from behind from all the tiffany down at the club except for there's no stripper glitter that comes on them you're gonna have to go find that on your own so we got these guys the cowboy cadillac we got the do logo fresh in stock all in heather gray next level shirts like i said the most amazing shirts ever duff's even barking outside saying yeah get yourself some and if you buy one this week, what is it, October 30th through whatever, first week of November, Chin's got the dates right here. We got these Centennial Foreman North Dakota buttons. The neighbor lady had a pile of these. Her husband was the mayor at the time. She said, I can't stand to throw them away. And I said, yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do with a pile of buttons either, but until they run out, we'll uh, throw these in the orders with anybody who purchases a Shirt. We still got a couple of low lifes on hand, and we also got a couple of the old style do logos on hand. But we're really trying to push the old uh, cowboy Cadillac and the do logo merchandise. So get yours, get yourself one of these. Leave us a special note in your order, and uh, we could sign the back of this button if you'd like. Uh, Duff can't because he doesn't have thumbs. But and if you're not into shirts, we got decals, we got magnetic screwdrivers, we got magnetic can koozies, we got. Banners, we got pens, we got SS5 scrapers, you name it. Hit us up, Mortski.com. Now back to your regular scheduled programming. You know, I don't think we've ever had this thing up on the lift before, because I think we did all the DJM suspension at the old shop, so I've never really looked at the bottom side of this thing. I think they make two different chin pieces for these, a three inch and a five inch. This is the three inch, and uh, it's missing about 20% of it. So there's that. But here's all that nice DJM suspension, upper and lower control arm stuff. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna drain the oil because this engine's probably gonna go sit outside and I don't want this oil running around outside and neither does Greta. How dare you? And who knows, maybe we'll see a bunch of coolant in here or water or slime, sludge. Who knows? Maybe there'll be gold in there. Maybe it'll be empty. Oh yeah, oh yeah. See all that coolant come out of there? We definitely got a bad head gasket, I would assume. So, 
cheap 4.3 carbureted engine for sale needs head gasket at a minimum we got some heat for the winter though not that coolant part i wonder if that exhaust is gonna work i'm sure it won't dang it nothing ever works guess i'll have to get an appointment with the old boom tube Speaking of exotic, oh, missing the pan. Son of a biscuit. This floor is well seasoned. It's, this floor is not going to get rusty. We're going to take the inspection cover off. Is that cast aluminum? Oh, yeah. And we're going to take the torque converter bolts out while we're down here. We're going to do the exhaust bolts, probably the tranny coil lines, probably drain the coolant. We're going to do a bunch of stuff going down here. Well, we're down here, and it's up there. Let's get to work. How many of those exhaust bolts do you think are going to come out without heat? None. I'm going to spend all the time heating them up and taking them off, and then they are... We're not going to need them anyway. Yeah. If we snap those off, what if... Yeah. We're just getting the impact. Just snap already. All right, we're getting the big dog. By golly, one of them come out. Two of them. Two out of three, not bad. That one didn't fare so well. Tech tip of the day, take your excess wiring, pinch them behind your nice new windshield wipers. Oh yeah, this thing's got a new windshield in it too. Now you're on your way. And don't forget these ground wires. They'll fight you. We'll take it off the firewall. Well, I'm sure we forgot something. Bell housing bolts. Yeah, that's gonna fight us. We'll lift her back up in the air and take those out. Good idea. We might even try to get the top two while we're up here. Ah, let's look from the bottom. It doesn't look like any fun up here either. All right, did a little shuffling around here. We got too many cars in the shop. Too many projects going. Anyway, we got our lift plate. Bolted onto our 4.3. Got our bell only bolts out. Got room for our cherry picker now. So let's get this thing yanked out of here and steal what we need off of it and carry on with our lives. We forgot. Seems like it's chopping at the bit to just jump right out of there. Well, our throttle cable fell back into its bracket, so we're going to need to get that out of there before we let's stretch that out too far. Because we're probably going to need a longer throttle cable, but we definitely don't want to stretch out the one we got. Because then it'll be no bueno. I feel like you can't stretch a cable. Guess who kinked the transmission cooler lines? Hopefully I remember to fix that before we smoke the transmission. Anyway, these mounts are not gonna work because the mounts are four and a half inches back. And yeah, there's an extra set of holes, but I don't think I can just move them ahead. I think these are shaped different. So we're gonna get a different set. And then the small block ones should have the rubber mount on both sides. This side's got the clamshell on the mount and then the rubber is on the block so we're gonna have to do something there but i'm gonna go see if i can find a set of these engine stands and probably some tranny cooler lines and a whole bunch of other miscellaneous parts Ooh, hose clamp we might need that so i could probably move those ahead but that hole isn't present and then this mount is different and we'd probably have to do some welding and i don't know if it would sit in the same spot maybe the harmonic balancer would hit maybe a four three sits lower i don't know let's see if i can find some stands in my stash though 
All right, back here in square body skid row. This thing was originally a small block automatic two wheel drive. So those should be the right ones. Here we go. We're gonna get lucky and not have to pull those. Oh man, there's two bolts down there. Son of a biscuit. Of course we're not gonna get lucky. Guess you're gonna go lay in the dirt, Duff. Your favorite, not mine. Oh, it's all wet from the rain. You can tell by the round headlights, these are all 73 to 79s. And a lot of things change between those years, so I don't know. I don't think the frames change, but like, I grabbed the radiator out of this. I don't know if the radiators and the uh, radiator hold on are the same. But what else can we pillage? Trans inspection cover, stamp steel. Bumper brackets, bent up bumpers, nothing we need there. This guy's got a fan shroud and a radiator hold down. But I think those are different. And then you gotta have the right shroud with the right hold down, with the right core support, with the right radiator. And let me show you what I got here. I got the radiator fan shroud from that 78 C10 diesel. Should be the same. And I got the radiator from that as well. We got our uh, engine mounts. We got a couple of hold downs. We got some exhaust manifolds. We got clamshells. We got the tranny cooler lines from that uh, diesel as well, because that was a turbo 400. So that should work with this radiator, because that's what it was with. We got the air cleaner off of the, uh, what was a 75 G20 van, the burnout machine. We took that off the K5 Blazer and put a big boy one on there. We can put a big boy one on this one, but it was handy, so we grabbed it. Because we're trying to do this quick. Grab some power steering pumps out of my stash. Fall is here. Oh, look at that. A Brickland sitting in the trees. Good spot for it. Come get your junk, DD Speed Shop. Just kidding. We'll put it on Mount Morsky if you leave it here any longer. It's already snowing out in western North Dakota. They got like eight inches last night. So, uh, it ain't far away. Let's get back in the nice warm shop. Duff, what are you hunting up there? You're just a stinky swamp donkey. Maybe we should work on the old country squire one day. Eh, Ford things. So here's our engine mount stand tower thingy mobopers and i know somebody's gonna argue and say just slide them ahead but you can see these have this uh, shoulder that comes off that's significantly different and then instead of having two bolts at the bottom these guys only have one and absolutely we could have cut these up and modify them and re-drilled holes and spent a whole bunch of messing around where it took me maybe 20 minutes to get these other ones off they're cheap they're plentiful we're just gonna grab. And the other thing I'll address right now is, I'd love to pressure wash that transmission in the frame and put new tie rod ends in and run new brake lines and uh, put cab corners in and, and powder coat the frame, but we gotta do one of these videos every single week. And it seems like the full on transformation videos do way better than the ball joint video and then the brake line video and the exhaust video and the painting video and the teardown video and the wheels and tires video and the brakes video. So we just Bang it all out, we only got so much time. And the other thing is, that's where people get burned out. You blow a project all apart and then the core support's rusty. So you spend three months looking for a core support or spend $8,000 on a core support or send the transmission off and it gets lost to the transmission guy. Just like Freiberger says, don't get it right, just get it running. So we're gonna whammy this thing together as quick as we can, as budget friendly as we can. You can't say cheap. Cheap sounds like you're a hack. And if you're gonna say that I'm a hack because I'm doing budget friendly things and that I'm using parts that I had laying around and then I'm not pressure washing it, by all means. If you're calling me a hack because I didn't pull that transmission out and pressure wash it and didn't rebuild it and didn't pressure wash the frame, so be it. But did you get a square body Chevrolet short bed V8 swapped in a matter of a couple days this week? Exactly. I'm not gonna spend a whole day disassembling, another day pressure washing and reassembling because 
I don't enjoy that stuff. You want to see that stuff? Go watch that guy in Oklahoma. He likes pressure washing and taking stuff apart and powder coating frames, but not for us. Right, wet pup? Right. You just want to go back outside and run around in the wetness. You look tired. All right, people are tired of me talking, so I'm going to put these engine stands in. Uh, you know, ideally, if you're doing this right, these are rubber mounted engine mount. I've never seen them fail. Uh, and if they do fail, they just kind of rattle around in there. They're encapsulated, so. You know, if you were doing a full rebuild, you'd get new uh, engine mounts here, but we're not. I wish I had a mark which was right and which was left, but we shall figure it out. I'm pretty sure this is the left, the right, and this is the left. Yeah. You want to put them bottom bolts in? They're no fun. Okay. Let's do that. Even a small block Chevy swap from a 4.3 V6 can't be easy. Let me show you what's going on here. So I'm guessing this is a Chinese Edelbrock knockoff intake. I was just about to dump some oil in it. Yeah, that's right. We're going to give it an oil change, aren't we, Duff? And I noticed the valve cover gasket is just uh, flopping around in there. So the valve covers are hitting the intake because I think the intake is cast too large. This side's better, but not by much. The front's okay, the back not so much. So I think we're gonna bend a tang on these nice steel valve covers. Cause I'm sure aluminum ones would do the same thing. And we're not gonna grind up a nice set of aluminum ones. Really, what needs to be done is this intake thrown in the trash. Because it's got the holes hogged out for Vortec heads. And it's got those ports back there that we don't need and it's EGR and then this garbage hit in here is just Not so good. God dang it. All right, let's take the valve covers back off and Address that situation. Yeah, I don't even think I could dump oil and it would just be pouring out here We're committed now Not real impressed are you Duff? This side was pretty good already this one hit a little bit more but over here on the uh, right hand side is just mashed into that intake. I could probably trim it off, but even if you trim it off, I think that washer is just about gonna hit that intake, but it seems like it's tight. I prodded around in there with my magnetic Mortsky screwdriver, and I think it's gonna seal up. I guess next step would be to take these valve covers off and grind a little off there. I don't really wanna grind on that intake, but I really don't care for this intake. My resolution would be to grab a stock GM quarter jet cast iron intake, throw that on there, but we're already committed. We put fittings on there and thermostat housings. We get the distributor dropped in, so we're just going to run this, see where it gets us. Duff says, hurry up and slam that thing in. We got birds to chase, rabbits. All right, we'll get back at her. There, I got a big bar, and then we used the ratchet strap and we pulled her over there and Mojo crammed her in with the old 3 ace impact. So, engine mounts are both in and tight, bell housing bolts are tight. We got our torque converter in, so yeah, ready to put the starter on and inspection cover and some tranny lines. Hook up some wiring, and we're pretty much wrapped up down here. I did blow out the transmission mount, so we're gonna need to find one of those. So, is what it is, it needed one anyway, but it's shot now. Also, 
whole race car people got a little aggressive grinding off the block there and there. I don't know if they had some big nasty starter on there or what. I did notice it had a pilot bushing in it, so they must have had a manual behind it. But that's our starter bolt we need to use. I don't think they really got into the threads, but it's a little sketchy. Uh, I think the straight bolt pattern is for the 153 tooth and these staggered are for the 168? 153 and 168 and 164. Anyway, those are the two we need. So that kind of sucks, but oh well. Don't buy engines from race car guys. Yeah, look at our engine, our transmission mount. It has left the chat. So we can't have that. That probably didn't help our whole engine mount situation, but I noticed it before then, so I was aware of it. But I think I got one of those laying around. So we'll slide one of them in there too while we're at it. And then we'll be able to carry on, get some manifolds on us so we can hook up the exhaust. Yeah, keep plugging away. Spark plugs in there. These are some Atlas. What are they? A uh, 34R6. A subscriber sent us a big box of those suckers, so we're gonna burn them up. This thing had some Excels in it, you know, some 57 576S Excels copper core, and they didn't look too bad. I don't know much about spark plugs, but some of these got some deposits on them. Hopefully, that's not aluminum deposits from. Things degrading internally, but I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Got our manifolds doctored up, cleaned up the studs, had to put one new stud in. Took the scotch brite pad, cleaned them up, so let's whammy those up. These are the ugliest manifolds ever. They're super rusty. I think again, a subscriber, old Dave, he hooked us up with a 307 from a like a 70 or 71 Chevelle that was his mother-in-law's that rusted out, but these manifolds are super rusty, but should be fine still better than headers so we're gonna get those on there and uh yeah hopefully get some exhaust like that
what we got? We got the radiator of that 5.7 diesel. I used the tranny lines off of that because that had a turbo 400. They come over on the driver's side on the diesels apparently because there's an oil cooler, engine oil cooler on that side. Grabbed a little bit better fan out of my stash. All the front pulleys worked out. The power steering pump, we use the water pump, we use the pulleys, the alternator brackets, the alternator wiring reached. I did have to extend the wire for this temperature sender. I put in a, a bushing in there, uh, manifolds, the exhaust, I don't like the way it fit up. So we're probably gonna have to go to boom tube. I'm guessing we're gonna have an exhaust leak, but we got it on there and it snugged up. Uh, these hoses, long term, I'd like to put different hoses on it because I'm guessing these are longer than they need to be since I was a six cylinder. We don't have a fan shroud because, yeah, this is an old style radiator and a new style 81 to 87 core support. So these aren't exactly the right radiator hold downs because they're for like a two or a three core. And this is a four core. This thing holds five freaking quarts of oil. What do you think about that, Duff? Oil, antifreeze, lots of antifreeze. Uh, new heater hoses. The original radiator had a heater hose come in here, but so we just tapped into the water pump instead. Used some old plug wires and cap that I had laying around. Had to find a different bracket for the throttle cable and a, the different throttle cable, the 431 wouldn't reach, of course. Had to find some different fittings. Got our PCV hooked up, our vacuum advance hooked up. What else am I forgetting? Got our uh, vacuum hooked up for our, our brake booster and for a turbo 400. We don't have a kick down on a turbo 400 or a cable style kick down. It's electronics on the pedal, so we don't have to mess with that. Yeah, I think we're ready to hook up a battery cable and go. We got oil in it and we got antifreeze in it and I put some ATF in it. So yeah, she just needs some hot sauce and hopefully the timing isn't 180 off, but I'm sure it is. 50, 50, 90 rule. All right. Shout out the old hot sauce. See what happens. Slingshot engaged. Slingshot engaged. The exhaust even sounds pretty good. By the accelerator pump. Oh, yeah. I don't think the gauges work. Looks like we got a little leak going on right about there. Right here. Not here or here so much. Right here.
You ready to go for an RIDE? Huh? We got our little tiny 75 van air cleaner on it. The stock 431 would have worked, but it's got the big snout on it and that big long plastic thing. And it's probably not gonna be in the right spot. So we're just gonna go with the cute little guy. I wanna get the factory 86 air cleaner for a small block. The upper radiator hose is off a of 72 Monte Carlo. Helped a buddy put new hoses on his car and his upper one wasn't so bad, so I stole that. And the lower one is just the stock 4.3 shortened up. The upper 4.3 had smaller diameter uh, inlets and outlets and then the thermostat housing was pointed straight up. So just didn't work real well. It looks like we got a slight leak on our radiator, so that's awesome. Guess we'll be looking for one of those. Problem with this diesel one is if we put a regular one in then we got to find different tranny cooler lines but maybe we can find a the right one for a 81 to 87 and then get some different tranny cooler lines and the shroud and everything to boot and then everything will match up i don't think we're going to need a shroud i just kind of want it for safety and for looks because this thing is going to cool like nobody's business with this giant radiator in it and a short bed pickup that uh isn't making a thousand horsepower and isn't pulling trailers so Ready to do this, pal? Yeah? All right, let's do it. We'll go for a ride? Yeah? I might have to move the cool rest out of the way for you. And we might have to move the bobcat out of the way. Come on, baby. Got a good starter in it. The battery, not so much. Not a good first tester. Kid sending the booster back with us. We've got to play with the timing. Maybe we follow the plug. She's definitely loading up. See if it clears out going down the road. We got our first snow last night. You can tell how excited I am about that. Sun's out though. Definitely did not time this thing at all. Here comes Mrs. Pookie. See if she'll honk for us. Definitely honked for us. What a nice gal. Get your tits up ranch decals from us at mortski.com and support all of the shenanigans of the tits up ranch. Yeah, the timing is definitely off. This thing is. I feel like it should have some more get up and go. But then I think I just tapped on the carburetor, so I think the flow was sticking. The needle and seat was sticking just enough so that it was wasn't dumping gas out the breather, but it was dumping gas out the top of the carburetor, and I'm sure some was going in to the uh, combustion chamber. So we might have loaded her up a little bit. So run her down the road, clear her out a bit. Yeah, we're cruising 70. I wonder what this has got for gears. It must have like 308s or 342. Is is it? Cruises down the road pretty good. Definitely not 373s. I had to guess, I would say it's probably got 308s. Triple 400, 308s. Yeah. Real lively. I don't know if 
this thing ever had enough power to spin both tires. So maybe it's got a, what do they call them? Go lock rear in the back. These pickups drive so much better than all the other hot garbage I have. Like the uh, Rex 66. Or even a Reggie. Reggie drives pretty good, but these things drive real good, don't they, though? Casper's a good pickup. Typical wing window, leaking a little air. We don't have a temp gauge, we don't have an oil gauge, so we're just assuming that our new low mileage good wrench is not overheating and it's not uh, not making oil pressure. So there's that. And we're assuming we got fuel in the tank. Maybe that's why it's running rough. It's probably got some old petroleum in here. We should probably put some non-ethanol in everything. See the farmers there still out in the field trying to do stuff. So this snow is not welcomed by those guys. Most of the beans are off, probably all of them now. There might be some left out there, but there's a lot of corn left. You guys are gonna be thrashing corn in the snow. But who knows? We didn't get much. Inch, two maybe. A couple of warm days. The sun comes out, we'll get rid of it. It won't be such a big deal. Well, it'll be a sloppy buddy mess up. 75, woo. Bottle her back, Casper. She don't run too bad, huh, Duff? Like it? There's some glare ice patches out here, though. We can definitely do a burnout on those. That'll be next on the list. Fix these gauges. I'm guessing it's either a power or a ground that feeds the entire cluster that is not powering or grounding the cluster because we don't have anything other than the speedo which is a mechanical gauge otherwise everything else is electric. The voltage I suppose just reads voltage off the system but I guess it would have to have ground for that so maybe it's power that we don't have? That's a hint. If you know why my oil pressure is at zero, my temp is pegged at 300, and my fuel gauge is at E, comment down below. I appreciate that. Good news is all our lights work. Oh my gosh, and the brakes on these square bodies are good. Push through the dash, huh, Duff? County roads didn't get near as much attention as the state roads. Weird, the squeaky pulley never went away because we're using the same pulleys. So we're going to have to address that. Yeah, they did some weird things in like 86 and 87. They got like the power steering runs off a of V belt and then the alternator is like a tiny little serpentine. They mix and match. They couldn't decide if they wanted to jump full-fledged serpentine and they didn't want to quite get away from the V-belts. They got a menagerie. A menagerie twice. I don't know what that is. Don't look it up on your work computer though. Well, Doc, you think the timing's good enough to uh, spin the tires? You can see all the slobber spots on the dash from when he rode in here the last few times. But hang on! Try to do a brake stand. Gotta turn the idle down. Yeah, she's just running a little off. Nope. Why don't we just V8 swap this thing and it won't even spin a tire? Because the brakes are too good? Did we put new brakes in this thing? Do you remember? I don't remember. Probably not. They're just that good. Well, that's disappointing. All that effort, can't even do a burnout. Don't get hit by a train. Did you fart? Stink duff. Yeah, maybe if we play with the timing a little bit, we'll uh, be able to spit a tire. And like I said, this thing's probably got 308s in the back, so. It's a and I 
bet it's a posse. No. Well, here, we can do a burnout. If we get on the ice and get started, North Dakota things. Cheating. So, your tire should want to spin down. So if I put my tire on the pavement and your tire over there, it should spin for easy. Just find some 373 posi and 12 volt, right Duff? You're fogging up the window, my friend. Let's see if the heater works. Fan blows! Is it hot air? Oh yeah. Good stuff. That's the thing, the heaters and these square body regular cabs, top notch. They will smoke you out of here. Unless a bunch of mice. Oh yeah. Unless they're full of mouse house. And then they won't they will stink you out of the cab, not smoke you out of the cab. Huh. Explains why the fan was vibrating up there. I'm trying to blow that mouse house through. Oh, and the engine died. Great. Grand. Wonderful. Well, this is splendid. At least there's civilization around us, so maybe somebody can rescue us if we can't get her going again. Oh, steam coming from under the hood. That's no bueno, Duff. More gas or less gas? Check the gas situation. See what's smoking under the hood. That's a good thing we leaked all that gas out earlier because I'm uh, pretty sure we just ran out of petrol. Tech tip of the day make sure your fuel gauge works. What's up? What are you doing? Uh, I don't know. What are you doing? You want to uh, come and get me then? <laughs> Broke down on the side of the road. I'm, I'm sitting in the white sharp bed in front of Dilly's house. I'll be here. Okay, if I'm not here, I'll be in the bar. Okay, bye. A pookie, he's a good kid. He's going to come get us. Guess I'm going to owe him a sandwich for this one. You, uh... You probably are a fan of being broke down on the side of the road because you think, oh, we can just go for a walk. We can just walk home because you're ambitious and like being outside. I'm fat. And uh, I don't like being out in the cold. All right, to be continued. Don't be a wank. Fill your tank. Idiot. Idiot. The Pookie, he's a good kid. Needs to wash his pickup, though. Come on, Duff, get in. Load up. Come on, Ducky. Ducky? You need a couple more uh, coffee cups up here. Yeah, get real thirsty. We gotta take them out. I don't know why I can't find them in the morning. Guess hey, what, Blakers? Duff's gonna eat you. No! Lick him back. Don't lick him back. <laughs> what were you gonna tell me now? <coughs> You've been smoking menthols again? No. <laughs> She's a straight Marlboro girl. How's school? Good. You got out early today? Yeah. Yeah. You got the check engine light on. You should get that fixed. You've looked at it many times. You can't fix it. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't because it ain't got a carburetor. All right, made it back. Uh, now without an event, we dumped like three gallons of gas in this thing, and it was just puking out the neck. So it was full of gas. Now there's gas spewing out of the carburetor. We cranked on it, and I don't know 
the ignition module went out or what. I gotta get somebody here to help me. Pookie had to go fix his furnace because it's beanie cap season. My furnace isn't working. So I think that's where we're gonna wrap this video. I just, uh, yeah, we just kind of run out of time here. Uh, speaking of time, in a short amount of time, we took a pickup that had a V6 and swapped a V8 in it. There's a little bit of fine tuning left to do, obviously, but I think it's probably just an ignition module and that carburetor is, I don't know, kneeling seats sticky or what, but we'll have to open it up, check it out, or maybe throw a different one on it. Uh, other than the fan shroud, this thing's not that bad. We gotta figure out the gauge cluster, so we got some gauges, you know. Small block's fine, but if you can't tell how much fuel you got in the tank, that's uh, not so good. So, thank you very much for watching. Check out our other videos, like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Go check out our merchandise. We're gonna have to work on some beanies and hoodies because uh, it's that time of the year. But anyway, yeah, Mortski.com, we got koozies, we got magnetic screwdrivers. Koozies are magnetic as well. We got uh, ball caps, we got t-shirts, we got banners, we got keychains, we got big pens, we got decals up to wazoo. So uh, go check it out. We got the couple of the low life shirts in stock, but we just got a fresh batch of Cowboy Cadillac. And also the Dew is back. And both of these guys are next level shirts. They're like, it's, it's like getting a hug from a nice bunny. Bunny hugs, isn't that what some of you guys call it? But yeah, it's just next level. They're the way to go. They ain't those starchy, hard black or gray shirts like everybody else sells in white, whatever. But Heather Gray, just like we like. And they're uh, super soft. You'll uh, you'll like it. Anyway, Mortski.com. All right, on to the next one, Duff. But remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, so long as you're having fun. Are we having fun, Duff? What do I smell like? You smell like you want pets? All right. On to the next one. Oh, you like this cold weather, don't you? You're a silly dog. Who's a silly boy? The heater did work really well when the engine was running. What do you suppose it is, Duff? Ignition module? Yeah? Me too. The dang motor home bites us again. You didn't think I'd just leave you hanging like that, did you? Yeah, Duff said get back to work. Keep an eye on that little guy. That little guy? Don't worry about that little guy. How about that little fella? Oh, that little guy? I wouldn't worry about that little guy. I think we killed our ignition module. <laughs> yeah, she's turning over slow, but I also checked, and I do have uh, power at the distributor, so. It's not the pickup side. It's gotta be on the distributor itself. Just kidding, I didn't have the coil wire hooked up and I put a new battery in it. Now let's see if it's got spark. We most definitely have spark. And now it wants to run. I don't know. We're gonna have to take some troubleshooting tools with us in the daylight on a nicer day. Try to figure out what's wrong with this thing, but we gotta fix that leaky carburetor. And our nice red meter is leaking too. No worries though. Duff is not interested in the coolant on the ground. It's not bad, but I guess we could try the old pepper trick. But she's wet in the core, so I think she's no bueno. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll hook up our plug wire and see if it'll run again. Because two plug wires are unhooked, so it popped off on six. Maybe it just wants to be a six cylinder again. Or remain a six cylinder. All right, which of these guys want to wear? I'm guessing the way they want to lay out. Yep. Well, now I am at a loss for words. The carburetor's not leaking. It was definitely flooded out. We floored it. So, really don't know what to do. Maybe we should just put fuel injection on it. No, then it snowballs back and we should have just put an LS in it. We'll mess around with this carburetor and fix some gauges and go from there. On to the next one. I really hate troubleshooting intermittent electrical problems. Or just intermittent problems in general. 
this late. Duff's ready to call her a night. Let's have some sandwiches. You having dreams or what? Nightmares? Yeah. Square body carburetors. Causing nightmares. We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to give 